I feel like it's starting to affect me a bit now, <laughs> dying on screen so many times. <laughs> Might do a comedy. <laughs> The film touched on so many sort of the teenage milestones, like the spot things you're supposed to hit, um, like falling in love and preparing for a, a formal, while showing us, but at the same time, the kind of tragedy of Mila and like the fact that she might not make it to these milestones. So for you two, what kind of milestones marked your teenage years and did they inspire the film maybe? Oh, go Eliza. Oh God. I mean, I feel like I've only just made it out of my teen years. Um, so it hasn't been brewing for very long, but my school had like three formals. One in year 10, one in year 11, one in year 12. It was so stressful. And oh my God, I just remember just being so dreading it, just absolutely dreading it. So I'm, I'm glad that I could have a an extremely positive experience on the screen. What made you dread it so much? Oh, it was just like, there was so much emphasis put on what dress you were wearing and the fact that no one else could wear the same dress as you and the hair and the makeup, everybody went all out. It was it was a very big deal. But I, I did have fun. You just have to um, have fun with the right people, I guess, yeah. which isn't always the case in your teenage years. Yeah, and I guess like um, in terms of anything that maybe influenced the film a bit, for me, the night out with um, Miller and Moses was something that I really wanted to um, make sure felt like the most incredible night out. This long, sprawling night that just kept having these amazing moments um, and sort of felt like it was never ending. And for me, I remember the first time I ever went to like an art school party and all the people were so cool and they were performance artists. And for me, that was really inspiring as, as um, a young person. So that's what kind of got us to, to look at creating a similar kind of party for the film. Mila's self-expression in the film is really vibrant. Like the fact that she loses her hair and her answer to that is like these incredible wigs. So what, what would you take away from sort of her attitude or uh, stuff like that to get you through a tough time that you were going through? She is just, she has the most irreverent sense of humor in in the most inappropriate situations. Is this a style? I was going for rat's tails. You look like a different person. What have you done with my daughter? I killed her. <laughs> oh my God. And I'm, I'm a bit afraid to be that way. I guess I'm like, I'm more like Miller when I'm with my friends and family and, and by myself, but um, maybe I'd have a, I don't know. I just think she's, yeah, she's just a really incredible character to have played. Yeah. It, it was an incredible performance of watch. Awesome, uh, thank you. <laughs> and Shannon? Mila, something that I learnt was to really um, listen to people when they are facing, you know, the greatest existential crisis of their life and to honour what they want to be doing and how they want to be living it. And I think from what Eliza and I learned when we were talking to um, an organisation here called Canteen, which works with um, uh, young people with cancer, they talked about how the medical industry and parents often can't really deal with the realities of what might be going on. And they obviously know what's happening, but they don't want to ever really speak about that quite so openly. They never want to feel like they're giving up or stop medication. And sometimes I think it's really important to instead listen to the person who's going through it and take their wishes quite seriously. So I really love that aspect of the film, the mm -hmm. idea of really listening to that person who it's affecting more than anyone else. Will you come to my school formal? I'm a bit old for it. No. Just wear a suit. I'd like to wear one. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> my heart's beating so fast, I was like having a heart attack. <laughs> Feel that. <laughs> Another aspect of the film I really want to ask about was the fact that 
And Moses is clearly very unsuitable for Mila, like, um, but she looks past his flaws to kind of have that romance that she feels she needs in that time. Um, so what do you think the benefits of that self-deception are to get you for a hard time? It pushes you, you know, it pushes you into areas you're too afraid to explore naturally in your own personality and on your own. For me, that was what I often thought about with, with their connection. What did you think, Eliza? Um, well, with what you said earlier about Miller, one of Miller's great qualities is, is, you know, well, what's important about this film is, is listening to, to, to the person that is suffering in the film the most, which is Miller. Dysfunction doesn't scare her. She's from a dysfunctional family. No. So in many ways, you know, she's had to learn to accept their flaws and, and, you know, she can judge them, but she doesn't really because she understands where um, their vices are potentially coming from. And I think with Moses, she knew that she didn't want to be looked at as a victim of this disease and he didn't want to be looked at as a victim of his addiction. And so I think they saw eye to eye in that, that they saw past that. There are so many fil uh, funny moments in the film, along with that kind of tragic, heavy, existential tone. I think the, the tone is amazing with how it balances it. How did you keep the playful atmosphere on set when you were dealing with such a like, heavy topic as that? <laughs> um, I think we all just really got along and it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's, it was a real pleasure to work on the film and I, I, I mean, in my opinion, we were all really close and I was excited to get on set every day and that's not, that's not that's such a great thing. The case. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's not the case for every film, unfortunately. Ben is absolutely hilarious um, and marches to the beat of his own drum. And, you know, there's Toby who's just as charismatic and funny and, and Essie, she's, she's got a really naughty sense of humour too. So there was always something to laugh about. There were plenty of times where Toby and I wouldn't be able to get through scenes because we were laughing too much. And at very inappropriate times. So um, I think there were plenty of laughs to go around. Yeah, I can't even remember. There was some scene where you guys would not stop losing it and I was finally getting so annoyed and I was like, just yes, stop it. Got to get through it. It's a night shoot. Just cut it out. Um, but I can't even remember what it was now. But um, I think as well, I really love hiring crew members that have a sense of humour because for me, you know, it's all about the people in front, but it's also the people behind have to have the same attitude as myself and, and what I'm asking the actors to deliver, which was this mix of tone as you're talking about. So I really wanted to make sure that there were a lot of people who know um, how to laugh and um, be reverent when it's important to uh, be that way. Mm. And um, yeah, so we were all on the same page. You've both worked with incredible female directors, actors, writers. So how does collaboration shape your path as a filmmaker? And is there anyone you dream to work with next? I mean, I I can't think of anyone off the top of my head, but I've really, I feel very lucky to have worked with the filmmakers I've worked with. And, you know, there's been a lot of people along the way who have guided me through that. and. People like Shannon and, and Greta Gerwig are huge idols of mine. Um, and, you know, I, I yeah, I, I feel very lucky to have worked with them. I'm just full of gratitude. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually did um, the press junket for Little Women, so I, I met Greta and Saoirse for that, which was- Oh, cool. really? Yeah, so this is, the sec this is the second movie I've seen you die in now, unfortunately. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I will say I'm I'm getting I feel like it's starting to affect me a bit now <laughs> dying on screen so many times might do a comedy <laughs> yeah yeah that. look I think collaboration is so important to me it's I, I really am a collaborative director I care so much about my heads of department and I need them so much um, because you know they supply me with so many extraordinary ideas and support and they make the work happen so I fall in love with the actors that I've already worked with so even though I'm sure there's other people I want to work with I just want to continue the relationships with all the great actors and actresses I already have worked with and um, yeah I really believe in, in the power of long-term relationships and, and how 
that can just grow and it's something I really love. Thank you both so much for speaking to me. You're both so incredible. <laughs> I'd like to talk oh. to you. Very inspirational. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much both for your time today. Um, I hope you have a good evening because it's morning here. So it's <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Um, have a good day. Take yeah. care.